Hello there. This is my first ever comic call. I uh, kind of got out of comics for a while. I was in the military, which meant I was traveling a good bit. So I did like digital comics, then college, marriage, moving around. So I, I didn't want to have to carry a bunch of stuff. So I mostly gave it away. Um, but recently I went on a kick and uh, I guess I'll just get right into it. I'm a, I'm a sucker for this sort of like metallic foil type stuff and this crazy psychedelic colorway. Um, Guy Gardner is normally a Green Lantern. He's the funniest Green Lantern, uh, but he briefly became the warrior because, I don't know, the era really needed something crazy. Uh, I just think it's really fun to like look at the ads as well. It's almost like a time capsule to, to look at Saved by the Bell. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, oh, look at that. Escape from Mars. Sega Genesis and Game Gear. What a steal. Uh... But yeah, I I think half the time, wow, that is a, not the best graphic layout. You can see things have changed a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of these because not only is it going back to the comics I didn't get whenever I was a kid, um, but it's like a time capsule. Even the advertisements are fun. So even some little stuff right there. Uh, yeah, normally he's a redhead. I don't know why he's blonde there. I just realized that. Anyway, setting him aside. Now, uh, all these I pretty much got for like a dollar, except for this one that was like a little bit more, but I wanted it because I'm a big fan of John Byrne's Superman and then what Dan Jurgens did later. And uh, it's like the only one without a fun gimmick really attached to it. But I'm just, I mean, you can't go, uh, wow. Full on Henry Cavill chest hair, good for him. Ew. Uh, yeah, I just, I love the way that Byrne and Jurgens and all that wrote Superman and all his friends. Ooh, I forgot about this. So this Wild Dog had had, like, I don't know, no more than 10 issues in any comic run ever. He's super niche. Green Arrow used him a little bit. They kind of reinvented him. Originally, his name was Jack. It wasn't uh, Rene or whatever they named the guy, although it was pretty good. Uh, so the fact that this ad is in here is pretty crazy. Um, I really like the guy who invented this, dude. It's really classic. I've read all of this guy's comics, like all of them, his other guest appearances, and some recent stuff. I didn't like what they did in Black Label with him for the Suicide Squad. I thought that was super lame. But I think that's just... I got John Byrne and I got a Wild Dog. That's super fun. I'm I'm so happy about that. But yeah, I, I like these sort of... Uh, oh, Muscle Man. The secret to becoming a real dynamic muscle man. Join today. I wonder if Pendulum Bodybuilding Club will still accept this coupon. There's a lot of bodybuilding things. I guess they wanted nerds to get buff like Superman eventually. Um... This one was a real fun find, because again, I got this sort of holographic situation going on with Robin, um, and Chuck Dixon is a name I recognized. I'm only just now getting back into it, so I'm sort of remembering everything. Robin 2, that's funny. That's a really lame name, Robin 2. Um, oh, the Atari Lynx, everyone. Uh, I got this mostly because I thought that was fun, but then there's a really funny comic panel that I've always loved, and I thought it was hilarious. Over 25 million lives will be saved with a game genie. Uh, but there's a thing where the Joker thought he killed um, a Robin, and then the Robin isn't dead, and he sees it, and he goes from, like, kind of upset to just purely enraged. Yeah, right here. And it's the funniest, like, I killed you, and then it's just, like, it went from, like, shock to just seething hate. And just, I don't know why. It's, like, it's the funniest... It's, it says so much. It's even got, like, the scratched-out lines around the panel to kind of show how raw and he's cracked around his face. I love that. I think that's... That's great. Um, but I had seen this panel not knowing which comic specifically it was in. So getting that by chance, I was talking about this with my friends as I looked at them, and I was like, w what are the chances? Oh, and the original Rick and Morty on CBS. Now we're going to sort of leave the realm of DC and stuff and go into uh, Image Comics... Shadowhawk, uh, this was basically invented, again, with sort of the metallic shine you got going on here. Uh, basically, this guy was like, as a kid, he didn't like the, the Joker. He was like, oh, he killed 35 people. Who could have guessed? And then Batman just puts him in jail again. So his whole idea was like, what if he just like maimed the, the people that were bad? And this is a special one because it's actually like a poster that opens up, and I'm scared to do that. Oh, dedicated to Stan Lee. That's nice. Um, but it, that's not the only crazy gimmick. This is actually really incredible.
paper that it's printed on. It's really sturdy. There's a second smaller comic within this comic that has a poster with a metallic sheen. It's like the everything that was awesome about comics rolled up into one. On sale November only from Image. But yeah, I think it's a uh, it's just a really fun snap back in time and just all these crazy gimmicks. Like you don't see comic books do that. And this paper, this print is better than modern comics. I'll say it. Like not necessarily these were, but this Image comics you can immediately feel a jump in quality. It's, it's perforated here. I actually got it for less than it sold when it came out. Um, I have half of mine just because it's so nice to keep it um, somewhere safe and actually not really mess it up or ever take the poster out because it's so nice. Um, let me get over here to Cyberforce. I haven't opened some of these. I got a little anxious. I, I'm impatient. So I opened some of the other ones. But another Image Comics uh, Strike Force with a Y. That's how you know it's cool. Um, oop, Todd McFarlane art. There you go. After Marks, I assume that's Mark Silvestri. So, another Image Comics person. Some really, cr I like, again, this, the print is really solid on this. I'm really shocked that comics from this long ago feel so good against, like, contemporary stuff. Yeah, you can tell they, like, Top Cow Comics. That's a name not everyone's gonna know. Kind of a silly name. You only get one shot. Striker. Man, everything had a Y, like, Striker has a Y, Strike Force has a Y, Cyber Force is supposed to have a Y, so that one makes sense. But yeah, this is like, I don't know, this like art style, I read a comic when I was a kid that was really off the beaten path, it had the same sort of art style, so I think I've got a, you know, when you've got all these guys with crazy flowing mullets and stuff in ponytails, it's the silliest, dumbest thing in the world in real life, but in comic form, it's just, I mean, Sylvester. Chris Claremont, I mean, come on, those guys are legends. So, let's see. Hellshock with a cross in it, whoa. Realistically, they should have, that color change should have happened differently. That's that's hard to read, but you know what? Hey, it's, is it of the year that this came out? It just says that it was on October 2nd. Um, it doesn't really, 1994, hey, good year. This comic and me both made into print. So that's not bad for 1994. That's probably like really limited. That's what they could do. So we got another Cyber Force. It was Cyber Force Zero. I kind of try to go a little bit faster through these. These are, like, it's, this is the type of thing I like to collect. Not because they'll have huge monetary value, but because they're fun. And again, crazy good print. Like you can, it holds itself even all like a three decades later. That's wild. Uh, I have new comics that don't have this level of quality. Um, yeah, that was the comic style. Just skin-tight boobies. Uh, some things never change. Power Girl's still suffering from that in, like, 2022, so what are you gonna do? Uh, a lot fewer crazy ads on this one. Yeah, this one was just, like, again, like, these crazy colors and covers. I'm just... It's fun to look at. Oh, it's... Hang on. Try not to bend it too badly, but... It's a big uh, poster style. That's fun. Uh, Young Bloods. Now, I can't remember if this was Rob Leefield or Jim Lee that did this one. Um, back when they all started Image Comics in 1992, 1991. Uh, I'm not a historian, so I don't remember. Also, I wasn't alive for some of those years. Oh, no, that's a uh, Chapel. He and Spawn don't get along because he killed Spawn uh, before for Spawn to become Spawn. He's not a super nice guy. He also, um, the government gave him, like, they can just set off a thing and it'll give him AIDS if he, like, goes rogue, which is worse than a bomb in the back of your head, like Suicide Squad, because you're still alive, and it's just not, that's a bad time. Oh, these colors are crazy. Like, the, the comic panel layouts are just all over the place. They're wild. Big splash panel. And he's like a super psycho savage Captain America, uh who sort of gets super edgy and then he stops being edgy. He gets split in half, goes to hell. All, you know, normal stuff. June of 93, Dooms as possessive. Dooms, Dooms 4. What happened to the first three Dooms? Why is it possessive? Who knows? This art's actually still pretty great. I'm, I'm really shocked. Got some more information over here. Oh! Woo! Oh, Leafield. 
My wife's not gonna let me put that up anywhere. Not that I would ever want... What? What? Hang on. Is this two... What? This is two comics that meet in the middle with a... Pi Wait, punching Nazis. Nice. It's two comics that flip in the middle with... So you can go, ooh, ooga booga. And then you flip over. Dude, comics were rad. Oh my god, that's awesome. That's re... That's crazy. Wow. And finally, uh, one more with the metallic sort of uh, metal leafing. Um, I'm a sucker for these. If and when I'm making my own comics, you better believe I'm at least going to make a one of one for myself like this. And again, like cardstock back to this. It's so strong. Maybe it's just because they needed to print it here. Another Silvestri art. Big fan of him. Clearly supposed to look somewhat like Rogue. Oh, wow. You can even see on the other side uh, where the raised printing was done. That's really impressive. Oh, Roxy wants to pay attention. Roxy, what do you think of Cyberforce? You a big fan? Roxy loves paper. Do you like blonde men with uh, ponytails? Is that your thing? Those appear to be mutants. No, please, please don't like that. Um, again, like, the, col the color and the print is really strong. You got some more, um, I think his name is Razor Claw. I don't remember. There's a couple people with Claw and Razor. Whoa, you just going in there for a handful. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I, some of the panels you can see, like, it's kind of, you get lost. But I, I don't know, I like it when they swing for the fences. It's wall-to-wall -wall crazy. The color is super good. That dude is jacked. See, this is why kids like me grew up with unrealistic body expectations, because this is what we were reading, and that's why they had those ads for gym memberships in the back, because we were like, yeah, that's all it takes. Even though we know these are like mutants and stuff. But yeah. Does he have multiple arms? Is that what's going on, or was that supposed to imply motion? I'm gonna have to go back and really read all these, because I, I didn't read Cyberforce. I read some Spawn and a couple other Image comics, but I wasn't like consistent with these because where I grew up, we didn't have a comic book shop. We had like grocery stores. Um, all new hollow foil, a uh, hollow foil cover. Okay, yeah, so he does have multiple arms. That's odd, but cool at the same time. Wow, very, very fancy. So anyway, uh, I don't know what all type of comics I'm going to collect. I have a bunch of graphic novels and hardcover type stuff. Uh, and I'm collecting Spawn starting from the beginning all over again in physical instead of digital. Uh, but I just wanted to share this sort of like if you grew up on some of these or if you've never heard of like Shadowhawk or uh, some of these maybe lesser known like Guy Gardner's run as Warrior. There's just some fun things and at, at the very least we have proof. So years from now when things tear up and the paper goes away, there's like a memory of all this crazy creative work that went into designing some of these awesome comics and maybe some ideas that comics should bring back like that weird... Uh, flip halfway through get a second comic idea or some tinfoil or some holographic stuff again man that would sell like hotcakes especially since right now dc is doing their 30 years uh since the 90s 30th anniversary i they should absolutely do some limited prints or someone just should that'd be so cool anyway i've never done like a comic haul i've never done anything uh like a video like this so um yeah, I hope you found this to be interesting. A little walk through uh, a little time capsule. Oh, Comics Code Authority approved. That's important. I think, is that Brother I? I don't know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any fond memories of these characters, just let me know in the, uh, in the comment section. Or if you have some writers or something you saw here that I should be checking out, let me know. Like, I'm always happy to find something, something cool. Kind of go back and use my adult money to get the things I didn't have as a kid, but always wanted. Anyway, thanks for watching.